All right, we are live, hopefully. Uh, hello, I am Anders. I am the host of Survivor Maryland Major Conflict, or I guess I was the host now that it's over. Today, talking about the finale, I've got a wonderful array of guests. Most of them have already done one this season, but one of them has never done one this season. What's going on? Uh, but before we get to that, I'd like to introduce my co-host, Aaron. You've been here the whole time. Tell me, what's it been like having to watch this whole adventure from start to finish? <laughs> Well, I mean, I would have watched anyway, so I'm just glad that I have an outlet at which I can scream after each episode. Um, it's very exciting. It's been an honor to be on, um, and I can't wait to scream some more tonight. Erin, of course, very sad that her winner pick did not make it to the finale, but she was in the finale. Sorry, Sadie. Um, joining us from previous podcasts, uh, from Endure Fame, a runner-up in her own right, Bree. Bree, love the eyeshadow. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. Now that you've given me a compliment, I'm feeling great. <laughs> Perfect. Can't wait to give you an insult later to make up for it. Uh, joining us from also indoor fame, Josh. Josh, so nice to have you back. You were here last week. What what difference a week can make? How much Honestly, different was this week's episode? Look at me. I'm like a whole new person after that finale. Uh, happy to be back here to discuss this craziness. We love it. And then, of course, joining us, the Generation 1 host and the substitute host from Episode 8, Mr. Austin. Austin, it's so wonderful to have you. How are you? Anders, you can say that, but we all know that I just emotionally, manipul emotionally manipulated you by saying that I wouldn't be your friend if you didn't invite me on this. So it's fine. It's fine. And but thanks for having me here. I'm very so excited to be part of the Gen 2 podcast. And it's yeah. an honor to be with these guests because they're wonderful. Austin, you didn't emotionally manipulate me. You're saying you didn't, and I have to go, all right, well, I guess we're friends, actually. Um, and after Austin did that, I got some text showing that Austin actually hated me the whole time and was talking shit. I was going to say, I just texted Chris LeCompton and was like, God, this Anders fell for it. Hook, line, and sinker. Uh, you know, you can do it both ways. Are you a hero or a villain? Um, all right, let's talk about this. This was two hours of... Highs and lows. The way I like to describe this season is in the same way that Terrapin Trials is incredibly dark and about relationships, this is too, but kind of with the opposite effect because they became closer friends after it somehow. I don't know why. Um, let's just get right off the bat, just reactions from the finale. Um, Aaron, after watching this finale, how did you feel? What, the, what were the emotions you could summon immediately? There were so many throughout the episode. I'm a super emotional person, as I'm sure you guys have, you know, realized throughout this whole process. I'm not gonna lie, I cried twice during the finale. Um, however, Wait, when? Wait, when? What part? Um, so I definitely cried uh, during the whole, like, definitely, I think during the whole Doug kind of having his breakdown, and then during the Santi and Doug conversation, just because I was like, I want someone to love me like that, you know. Like, you just, it was just such goals. Um, so I definitely did that. But then at the, it just, it ended in such a, I don't want to say disappointing, but it just, it felt anticlimactic that that was kind of the end of the arc. Um, and not even just Santi winning, but it was, it was, it felt like I wish the entire like final four friendship kind of thing wasn't even brought up at final tribal. I wish that that was just kind of had, I would have rather that that was kind of disregarded. And like Santi and Tim said, it was purely put down to game for the entire final tribal, but that's not what happened. Uh, and I feel like that is a big, that was a big detriment to all three of the guys because none of them really got to talk about their game. I think that part of why Doug didn't end up winning is because he felt it was more of an apology tour than it was a final tribal council. Um, so yeah, I was like, you know, my heart was racing for the first couple tribals. I was like, especially the final five, I was like, is Tim about to like Sari himself? Because I thought that Dane was going to get Sari, but I was like, Tim could really Sari himself here, which would have been incredible. Um, but it was a roller coaster. Overall, I do think that Doug deserved it over Santi. I think Santi had a better final tribal council, but I think Doug had a better game. Um, so very complex. <laughs> it's interesting you say you wish the final four was disregarded entirely because I feel like Tim and Santi would have agreed with you 100% in that. Uh, speaking of the final tribal breed, you were saying before the show this was, I believe you said, one of the worst final tribal uh, 
showings you've ever seen from all three of them. Would you mind uh, telling us your reaction to this episode and maybe going more into that? Why was this the worst? Um, I <laughs> There's a lot of reasons why I think it was the worst. Um, I think that they are all terrible at public speaking. So we can start just baseline right there. Um, I don't think any of them practiced. I don't know if they even wrote anything down. They just came in and they were not prepared. And they also just lacked like the charisma that, that is needed to, to really sell their story. So I think also one of the biggest things was that the jury came in so bit like bit, bitter, I guess. They were, they were bitter, but I think there's a better word to describe them. I just can't find it in my head right now. Um, they came in and they were bitter and I think it threw the final three off. And I don't think that they really recovered from that. Um, but I thought that maybe that would like even out the playing field, maybe like Doug would still pull out a win because everybody was kind of getting like shit on consistently throughout the final tribal. Um, and they were all giving really terrible answers, but um, it, it that just didn't happen. I do think like the worst, and Tim's gonna be pissed at me again for this, but I think the worst was obviously Tim. Um, I say obviously as if like, I know everybody agrees with me, but obviously it's Tim. He doesn't know how to sell his mindset, his story. He thinks that he was like the best out of all the three of them. And like, if you think that that's great, but also, be able to explain it in a way that is like logical and consistent and he didn't do any of it. And honestly, well, he was able to, because it wasn't actually the case. <laughs> yeah. Um, but even if that's the case, like even if you don't have anything really to sell, there's ways to market it a little bit better. And I don't think he, I don't think he did that. I think he just kind of like went into panic mode and he was speaking so fast and so like, like he, I, I don't know if you, did you time them? Because it felt like he was like running on a timer and he had a specific no. amount of time to like No, answer. I didn't. That's how Tim talks. And I will say this, for someone who talks so fast and so much, he doesn't say a lot. He doesn't say much. <laughs> he really um, doesn't say much. And I think, uh, not to derail because I do want to get to Josh and Austin, but I think it's a very interesting contrast to the way that Tim will talk at Final Final and then Santi will. Like, mm -hmm. I can think of the, the best example is like, I don't remember whose question it was, um, but Tim was like, it might have been Amanda's question. Tim was like, I just, I don't understand why everyone's saying this. And it's like, yeah, blah, 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 blah. and then Sonny goes, ditto. Anyways, to answer your question, it's like calm and calculated versus just yeah. off the handle. Yeah. Um, anyways, Josh, tell me about your reactions, your feelings. Did you cry? <laughs> I mean, um, I am known for being a crier, but <laughs> not today, Satan. Um, no, you know, I I didn't have like that. I think it's because they're all straight that I didn't have that emotional attachment to any of their friendships, um, to be frank. But <laughs> um, I think Erin said it best when she said, Doug treated this like an apology tour. And this tribal council was Doug's to lose. And that's exactly why he lost it. And it was painful to watch because really all three of them did struggle. This was not a great final tribal council in terms of how the final three answered any questions. They lacked the charisma to sell their game. I think with Tim, it was, you know, the game that he thought he played was not what he played to begin with anyway. So he had a battle to begin with. Uh, and with Doug, all he had to do, I mean, in my opinion, I mean, you are facing a somewhat bitter jury here, but he needed to own up to his actions and he did not. Oh. And that, in my opinion, is exactly what cost him the game. He played this brilliant game that the a good portion of the jury really saw. And the fact that he didn't want to own up to any of that, like that is just, it's, it's a sad ending. Well, then, here's, and here's a I question. Do you think that Santi is a deserving winner in his own right? But I don't think anybody can sit here and deny like this was Doug's to take. Mm -hmm. um, well, that's the question about owning it. It's like, how does Doug? How does Doug own this game and acknowledge the final four? Does he say I am a master manipulator and I did manipulate my friends, or does he say I had to use the emotional connection? because I knew I couldn't strategically get out of the situation. 
That's, I mean, that's the, what you just said, the la the second one is like, that's all he had to say. That's all he had to say. It's really but he wanted to pretend that, like, this is the thing. He, he did it. We saw it. You, it was on, not only just on camera, but it was in screenshots. You see exactly what his play was. And then he backpedaled. You just can't do that. It's, it's something that honestly kind of intense. I mean, you are playing with people's emotions at that point. You have to say, hey, this was a game. This was being done for the game to move myself forward. It is what it is. The friendships are still there. They're still real. But to then just say, nope, the friendships were real. I didn't mean any of that. When you, you did it. He said I it in confessionals. Like he was like, strategically, there's no reason I should be here in the final three. And I think if he would have just said that at final tribal, then that would have given him a little more leeway to actually talk about his game up until that point. Yeah. But uh, yeah. I mean, I disagree, but we can we can talk about that later. Austin, I want to get your reactions. Um, which I got several times. But tell me, what were your reactions to this episode? How big of a Tim Stan are you? <laughs> well, first of all, I just want to say that I can finally reveal this tidbit. But the I went to Spain last year, and the only three people from America that I met were Tim, Doug, and Santi, but in different places and different parts of the country. Um <laughs> And Tim and Doug I saw in Barcelona, and then Santi I saw in Madrid, and they weren't on the trip. To, I mean, Doug and Tim were together, but regardless, it was wild. So the point being that I really like all three of them as people, and you know, it goes without saying that characters on the show is very different than people in real life. But uh, you know, in terms of the finale, I think that this was so compelling for so many different reasons, and uh, there's going to be a lot of fun. Even the topic that you guys were just talking about was is so fun to talk about because I, there's not clear answers to any of this, to the players themselves, to us as viewers, to what the moral questions are. And I think that, you know, especially I think in terms of the friendship thing, when we talk about in real Survivor, it's very easy to draw the stakes where you have a million dollars on the line. You don't know these people going into it. You can very easily separate the game and personal. In this I think there's very much ways to, to separate game and personal, but when it does get blended and when someone puts that question out there, what is actually the choice? And I'm the kind of person that always is going to choose, you know, to be competitive and go for the game and that we'll figure it out afterwards. But that's not true for everyone. And those are tough choices. And um, I just found it so compelling. And I, Anders, I like that you mentioned the, the kind of Terrapin trials feels that it gave, because that's, that's what I was getting the entire time. And I didn't know if I was, crazy for thinking that but you know to I mean see you are the, crazy but not for that <laughs> well, the, yeah the I would the uh the Diamondback in Maryland the first line is Austin Trump is crazy for the original survivor yeah song crazy the um but the uh it, you just get the sense of people breaking down mentally and even the the Doug comparisons to Faluke like the game's going entirely in their control up until final six a, a move at final six totally shakes their kind of their confidence there um, and then you see these kind of warped mentalities where Fluke is convincing herself that she doesn't want to win the game. Doug's convincing himself that he's not manipulating them when I think he does know that he's manipulating them. Um, and the way the game and real life merge together. So it really was Terrapin Trials without like the sort of underlying questions that are a lot more challenging in terms of like whether sexism or racism play a role. Like th th those are things that I think get really tough about Terrapin Trials and the, the friendships. But uh, yes. Oh, Santi. Yes. It was, an, it was amazing getting drinks and tapas with Santi. He ordered us some, some awesome stuff. Um, and Santi, I, I, I was going to shave tonight and then I realized I was like growing a nice Santi mustache and beard. So I felt like it was an homage, homage to you. Anyway, there's a lot to talk about, so I won't get too much into it, but I just found it so compelling from so many different storylines about what make college survivor very different. Mm -hmm. I think, I think it was said in this episode, it's very hard if you are not a part of the situation to really like, I think, put yourself in their shoes and go, this is a, this makes sense. Cause I think for anyone who's just watching you go, why are you sticking together? Why does this matter? Why is this going to hurt you so much? It's a game, but it's like in the moment with all the feelings and the passion and whatever, especially when you put so much time into it, when people wake up and give you the information, like, I completely recognize Doug's sincerity in wanting to stay. But also, as a person who wants to watch fun gameplay, I'm like, fuck off. <laughs> Just vote him out. Uh, yeah. Well, we, we'll get more into that whole situation. Well, and to be fair with the whole friendship thing, like, 
it's kind of everybody else's fault too for letting these yep. three get as far as yep. they did. Yep. They, Girl, exactly. they were known. These connections they, were known. Exactly. And everyone just turned a blind eye for what? Mm -hmm. And then they well, and then complained about it at the end. You can't think exactly. about it. Who knew them being roommates was gonna play a factor into this season? So I think I mean, like, not even just roommates, Tim too. Yeah, I think that like that had to have been some sort of awareness. Like you had to have known that when you cast them, that that influence was going to be there. I mean, season six, we had four people who had like a relationship together. I mean, it wasn't. It was basically one person had three, but that didn't factor in because they weren't all great players, and they did get split up because of these relationships that were made. Like Swale, Thomas, Michael, Susan did get split up for that reason mm -hmm. because these people were aware. And it's not like people weren't aware in this season. I pretty much at every tribal would bring up the roommate thing. Because again, at final seven, there were two pairs of roommates. And people were still like, but they voted differently sometimes. Like, okay. And they're in the final seven together. Like, what are you mm -hmm. talking about? Um, but I, I, we can get into the roommate more in that discussion. Because that... Let's talk about the final five. Let's talk about the Dane train, baby. It made its final stop. It's very unfortunate, but what a wild ride, truly. Um, Dane going from an unassuming, mediocre white guy to perhaps the savior of the season. Who is to say? Um, okay, we, we can't take that from Angie. Come on. Hey, Dane was yeah. great, too, but let's not, not erase Angie from the savior of the season. Okay. Yes. It's yeah. It's unfortunate Dane had to survive for Angie to go, uh, or Angie had to go for Dane to survive. But that is that's how final six ended up. Uh, so final five, we have an interesting dynamic where it's like Doug basically says, "Look, if me, Santi, or Tim win immunity, we're all safe because I've got two idols." Um, Dane and Delaram know they're on the bottom. Delaram is like, "I will absolutely go for Doug no matter what. There's no question in my mind." Uh, Dane is like I am willing to do whatever I will work with Doug and I'm sure this is a moment we all love after Tim needlessly goes to rocks he then goes I don't know if I trust Doug anymore maybe I should make a move this time <laughs> because, of um, the because of the idols of all things like uh -huh. Dude, he's finding out about these idols that Doug has and he's like what Doug Another idol? I can't trust him. Like he does that every time he finds out one of finds out about one of Doug's idols. He's like, oh, Doug has an idol he didn't tell me. Can't trust Doug. He's every fine. Time. He, twice in this episode, he is told by Doug, who has lied to him. Oh, I have another idol, by the way. Um, but let's talk about Final Five as a round. So uh, when Tim gives us this moment of, I don't know if I trust Doug anymore. What are we thinking? What do we think about him sort of like flip flopping loyalty? Like, is Tim just Blinded, it or is he dumb? <laughs> this is dumb. This is dumb. Like, I find this to be the most ridiculous shit I have ever seen. Like, I don't understand how you can go to rocks for someone, like, willingly go to rocks with someone when all you would have to do is change your vote. And then the very next round be like, let's just vote him out. Like, what if we just, like, voted him out? Like, let's just make it spicy. Like, you, if you're going to rocks for, for someone, you have to be honestly willing to go to the end with them. That's something that, like, you just put your game in jeopardy for them. So you have to go to the end with them. I don't understand. And that's why I was a little confused about Final Four as well. I guess we can get into that in a minute. But to be to go to rocks and then to be like, what if we just pulled the trigger now? That doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. You could have gone. They could have been on jury because of that. He could have. He literally could have flipped at the revote to just get out, dog. Mm -hmm. So dumb. But I think the thing with Tim is that he he had everything so mapped out in his head, and I don't mean this as like he's a super mastermind. Just like. He was like, I'm going to take Santi out because I want to go to the end with Doug. I don't want to go to the end with Santi, but I want to go to the end with Doug. And so like when it didn't go exactly the right way at final six, he was like, well, I had the idea I was going to get out Santi, if not Dane. So I can't do anything to get out Doug now. Like I didn't understand the plan. And I think it just like, because Tim is such an easygoing guy. It doesn't really make sense, but I feel like he's very stubborn from a survivor perspective. Mm -hmm. And he gets very locked in on what he thinks are the, are the moves and the mentalities and the, the things he thinks are correct in the game and didn't really adapt from those. And you have to be able to adapt in those moments as Doug is telling you, I'm guaranteed final four. Like just, ah. And that's I mean, what 
Yeah, that's what I feel like he he harped on that in Final Tribal. He said that he was this like really adaptable player, and I didn't see that at all from his gameplay up until that point. Like I didn't think that he was adapting to anything. He had a, a rigid perspective on the game and he didn't change that the only thing that changed that was like the moves that were done and then he kind of was just like okay like but now I still want this to happen so I'm gonna do this now just because like this thing happened doesn't mean I'm not gonna do this thing your game has to change every round that's how it works it's how you mm-hmm. make it and you win I mean yeah. you you see the rigidness and the inability to be flexible in that same round where Tim has this plan we're gonna blindside Doug to the idol whatever, because he's going to play it on Dane. He learns on the walk over, Doug has a third idol. And <laughs> Tim doesn't really know. He didn't even think in the moment he could get to read. He just was like, I don't know what to do. It's He he had a plan. He learned some new information. And like, I don't know if Doug had played the idol on Dane as well, if Tim would have played it on Delarama or himself. I don't know what he would have done. It's I don't want to assume he would have played it on Delarama. But I also don't know if he was thinking that far ahead about playing it on himself and what would happen. Well, he knew I it. I don't think he never really thought that far ahead. That's part of the problem with his game. Yeah, I think it would have definitely depended on the order. I think the fact that Doug played it on himself first, um, like that did kind of so, like lock that in almost. Um, but I feel like I feel like actually I think that could have gone either way. Like, Doug definitely had to play one of his first, and then it was just all up to Tim on what he was going to do. But obviously, if Doug had played both of his idols at once, Tim was going to play it for himself. Because he did come up with that, like, pretty immediately of, like, yeah, I would have gone home if I would have just played the idol on you. So I think he was at least, like, clear in that aspect. But overall, just, yeah, did not make any sense. Like, from final six to final five, like, first of all, not only did you just go to rocks for Doug and now you're about to flip on him, but you just went to rocks for Doug and against Dane, who has been, like, the one person that has been solidly loyal to Tim the entire game, which was insane. Insane. Also, and then, yeah. what, what a great moment at Tribal where Doug, for some reason, goes, if I had three idols, Dane, I'd save you. <laughs> You have it. Why are you trying to say it? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I just, it's like hard to even, I I was having trouble even thinking through the final five tribal because the whole time I was just playing in my mind, like Tim had the easiest possible way to get out of Doug with like so little blood on his hands at final six. And if you do, you either do that or you do it at final four. You can't really do this Mm -hmm. in between where you basically go for like, you could press the button to get Doug out or you could run seven marathons back to back to back to get him out. And you chose the seven marathons, which is such a low likelihood of success. Like, I just, it, it was so mind blowing that it was like hard to even work through the strategy of like him running in circles to try to account for the fact that he messed up the last round. I mean, um, it, it goes back. To, sorry. Sorry. Uh, but it goes back to like, I mentioned several times like the finite amount of tribals because it's like you only have so many opportunities. And I think the issue is. And this wasn't just a Tim issue. This was everyone's issue. Is they were thinking very far ahead about when they should take out Doug, rather than making a plan to take him out. Like Sadie, who I will get into this because this infuriated me to no end. Uh, Sadie makes this claim like you guys didn't want to get rid of Doug, and like it's it's messed up. This is our season, and you ruined it. Meanwhile, that- her plan was mm-hmm. to take Doug and Santi to the final five and get rid of Doug at final four, which. Is not a like it, you're waiting until the last possible second, which can easily backfire. So to me, in that moment when it's like, wow, how brave of her to say it. It's like you also weren't going to do it. If Sadie had made a plan, she absolutely could have taken out Doug at like final ten, final nine, when she had the people and all she needed was Angie. And that's when you take out the Doug. You have to take that character out much sooner because if you let him get any further roots, you have Doug at the end. Exactly, and, real, and again, and that should have been the winner. Mm-hmm. Yep, and I think that was literally said by somebody like in a previous episode that was like, "I want to work with people that want Doug out eventually." Like it wasn't even now. Yep. That was a direct quote from somebody. Like I don't remember who, but I do remember that being said. Of like, I want to work with people that want Doug out eventually. It was Angie. Yeah, I think that's because there's not like that. That's the thing. There's no one who's like I am anti-Doug because they've all been taken. 
I think the jury was like the was perfect as like an avatar for the audience. That was what's what was so fun about this episode is like they were channeling all of our rage about the like you know boot order of the season. But the the funny thing is that the people who like had been trying to stage this counterattack for the longest time, Dane and Angie, were basically the least bitter in terms of their comments on the juror. And I feel like it's because they saw this weeks ago and like realized they had to do something about it. And everyone else on the jury like got to final four and saw it happen and were like, wow, this is infuriating. I can't believe we didn't do something about this. And the other ones were like, yeah, we knew that. Like, that's why we were doing something. So it was just, yeah, it was very hypocritical to see the jury just like finally get it together and then channel this rage that they should have been feeling, you know, weeks ago. Exactly. Now, yeah, no, Sadie's saying like this was our season too. It's like, yes, but you made it Doug's season. Like it was the jury's fault that this final three happened. They could have made something happen if they would have ever had any semblance of wanting to open their doors and wanting to work together. But it was Doug who made sure every one of those doors were closed between people and that people wanted to go do everything through him. So they they let this happen. And that is what kind of pissed me off about like the whole jury questioning phase and them being so bitter. Because it's like you don't you don't get to be bitter when it's when you let this happen, which mm -hmm. is which is how it went. Mm -hmm. and yeah. I, I, oh, go ahead, Brie, please. I was just going to say, like, I thought that this was going to not be a bitter jury because of that. I think that they were, like, projecting a lot of, like, their own mistakes onto the final three. Like, them going in, like, I mean, obviously it was hilarious watching, like, Delaram and Abby, like, go in on them. But it's, and Dane, but they did the same things except those two made it to the end, you know, like they're going to be the final tribal losers and you guys are the jury losers. Like you're all losing, but you know, they just made it a little bit farther than you. So it, it's, I don't understand. I think that they were just like embarrassed that they let it get that far. And you can have a great perspective on jury and be like, well, now they have to take out Doug because you know, Doug's going to win. Like they need to take him out. Well, you needed to take him out too, but you didn't do it. So mm -hmm. all of you guys were dumb for letting him get to the end. I mean, he's still lost, but that was because it's so were wild. Dead. It's wild that he because they everybody knows. Everybody yeah. knew. Yep. That was the threat. Yeah. It's it, it's really weird. And plus, like they were kind of rewarding somebody who brought Doug to the end despite knowing that he was going to beat them like it's it was very strange like i found that very strange i do have a question though um do you think that him that at final was it final whenever dane got voted out um do you think that the reason doug had said i'm gonna like if i had three idols i i would use it was a means to catch like a jury vote or what was the what was the purpose of that i didn't really I don't know. That was the only thought, like my only rational thought was him saying that so that he would catch that jury vote. And it, you know, inevitably. Um, I will say that I, I don't know why he said it. It's one of those moments where it's like, why did Doug make a reference to something that he, it's like, why did he mention he had an idol at final six? I think it's like in the moment he felt like he had to say something probably for why not to give it to mm -hmm. Dane. But it was a needless lie. It really was. It was unnecessary, completely unnecessary. Um, let's talk a little bit about Dane because this episode was definitely interesting because Dane has survived 16 votes against him. The only people who had never voted against Dane that he'd been to a tribal with were, of course, Natalia, Eric, and Amanda. Um, everyone else had voted for him at least once, which is insane. That's insane. Um, so Dane is still here. Uh, now, when he talks with Doug... Doug is coming is like, this might be my only chance to like even the field at final four. If everyone's turning on me um, that I don't know how much of this is bullshit or true. Like Doug was hyping up Dane's game. Do we think that if Dane had made it to final three, he could have had a shot at winning? I think. Had, go ahead. Um, I think he had a good like underdog story, I think, but Sometimes that carries weight and sometimes it doesn't. I think maybe with this jury, it might have. But he did have a great underdog story and he won that one challenge. So I put him on the map. <laughs> put him on the map. Himself. Never would have known. I think it's dependent on if Doug is there. 
which is like it because that's also what they said about Delaram, right? Like when she was doing her jury question and they were like, Would you have won? And she goes, Well, yeah, like if Doug wasn't there, like if that was the other option. But I mean, Doug, I think I think that that argument's hard to come by now because Doug didn't win, you know? I mean, so yeah. really what could have happened if it was a different combination, even including still Doug and Santi, like it could have been Delaram winning, it could have been Dane winning because this jury was clearly bitter and they cast their votes in a different way. And who knows what, maybe either of them, I mean, I'm not quite as sold on Dane uh, being able to, but Delaram probably could have sold her uh, final jury uh, pitch a lot better than the other two could have, you know? So maybe we do have a Delaram win if she's there at the end. Um, I, I don't know. I think Dane is like generally the most well-spoken of all of them. Like I didn't anticipate that of him at all but i mean in watching him speak i think that he was much more compelling than than the three sitting there at final tribal and like i think him and delaron were probably a little bit more like on the same level but i do think that he was really compelling and if he was there next to fair to I think if, tim, just say tim <laughs> well i think if i think if dane that is the one thing i will say about final six i still don't think it makes sense for tim because he wanted Doug out right after, but mm -hmm. if Tim does flip there and it's Dane, Delaram, and Tim, Dane is by far the best at crafting a narrative and mm -hmm. very regularly did that during the season, both openly in tribals and also in confessional. And I just think that Tim doesn't get a lot of credit for that move. And it's very easy to see a world in which those on that kind of underdog story for Dane really does win out over Tim. I think it would probably be between them. Cause I just don't think Delaram is good enough as a speaker and she kind of, you know, admitted throughout the whole season, like, I didn't really start playing until this final six episode. So I think that she has a tough time there. And it's between mm -hmm. Dane and Tim. And, and Tim probably has Doug. I don't know. Maybe D Doug probably would have been the most bitter juror. So maybe he doesn't vote for Tim if he flips there. But I, I think Dane probably does win that, honestly. And, and that he had a pretty good shot if he could claw his way there. But if I we're mean, saying, like, Delaram is the person who's like, oh, I haven't really done anything up until this point. I mean, the argument can be the same for Santi and Santi even said that during final tribal, he was like, I was a huge threat before the merge. And then at the merge, I dropped off and I like my, my, he described his gameplay as quiet and he like kind of owned up to letting Doug take the, you know, the spotlight for most of these moves, but it like it inevitably paid off for him. So I wonder if like she could have sold it in the same way in that case. Well Santi and Delrom speaking are two different animals. Santi is a lot more organized. I cut, look, with Delrom's two like big moments in Final Four and her final tribal, I want to make it clear how much editing we had to do to make it a coherent thing. She says it, how much she loses track of things. Like, her list, I swear to God, she read the same point at least four times. Like, Delrom is a fun, absolutely crazy girl. Public speaker, she is not. Uh, she like, said like she was watching the stream yesterday she would like start on a thought and like five seconds later she would be like oh i don't remember what i was saying which is like very me i do the same thing but that's why you write a speech <laughs> like brains are too powerful she had stuff written down and she just couldn't because <laughs> she's kind of like interjects she's like oh wait but then this thing yeah yeah, that's why you stick to the notes. I guess I I'm just biased part of being uh, towards Delarom, and that's why I'm just like, yeah, she could win. Because well, I, I think that well, was really funny. Like, also, I think the reason Delarom would get, would get credit for the Doug move is only because she was the only one there who had been a part of it. Like, yeah. if Dane and Delarom are there, Delarom does not really have, like, a thing to stand on. Because Dane ultimately, like, Dane was there, and he can speak more compelling. Although, in we if we live in the great world where... Uh, Dog gets blindsided at final six, and she wins. I mean, that is oh, yeah, that happens. But, yeah. Oh, uh, if only. Thank you, Tim, for this world. <laughs> I, I think the hard part with evaluating those hypotheticals, and I do definitely see the point about Doug, you know, not winning. And so, how does that factor into the expectations the whole season? But if Doug, if the texting thing doesn't happen, Dane votes for yeah. Doug, and Doug wins. And so, the scenarios where Doug loses this is such a microscopic level and it really had to go a bunch of ways it maybe he would have tanked anyway but i just think because you know that one vote would have changed it he probably wins in most scenarios if that doesn't happen i don't know if that's entirely lost. true i think i 
we can we'll get into the voting. I want to get there at some point, but I we can talk about. It. I don't necessarily think that just the texting is what lost dog the game. I think it is both of those things happening. The final four uh, emotional manipulation and then also the text. I well, I, I, but I think like yeah. he stuck his tails between his legs so much because he knew he got busted in the. In oh the, well, not, I mean, yes, dog texting, and he wouldn't admit that, that he like then couldn't own it at all because he was like, "Well, I have to repair this friendship," and it, well, we'll talk about it more. So, uh, so Dane, uh, Dane, who may or may not win, who knows, is there? He's made a lot of enemies sometimes on purpose by telling them to vote for him because he has immunity or like just being generally Danish. Um, <laughs> Dane. Dane Dane like uh you know how people hate the Danes. Uh <laughs> such and, a dumb joke. And uh he goes home, unfortunately. Doug decides that it's just better to take out someone who could conceivably beat him. Um we get to final four, and Santi, Tam, and Delaram are all like, We should get rid of Doug. We absolutely should be uh making this move against Doug. Um and then they beat Doug in the Final Four Challenge, which, I mean, right after Tribal, it's so awkward. Tim literally is like, well, we got to beat Doug, with him standing right there. It's some bold choices to make. Like, everyone's kind of aware, but you don't need to be so blasé about it. Um, after Doug loses, he's a little bit sad. What's how, – how would – looking at everyone's reaction after the Final Four – what were all of your thoughts? What were you thinking about, like, Doug's initial reaction and sort of the moments that followed between Tim and Santi and then Doug, Santi, Doug, Tim? Because they are very emotional. At final five or four? At final four. At four. You mean, do you mean after the challenge? After the challenge, yes. Oh, okay. I was like, yeah. what do you mean? So <laughs> I said a lot of things. I was going to a place, but I'm asking you about Sad Gate. <laughs> Sad. Crying. I can cry I can, time. I can jump in because uh, I I was actually there that night, and I I'm pretty sure I'm filming the conversation where Doug and or Doug and Tim are walking, and then before going to the basketball game, and Doug is so quiet during that, and it's it's like the denial stays stage of the sadness. Like I don't think he's fully accepted it yet, and then he gets to the grief or stages of grief. He hasn't gotten to the next parts yet, and then the frustration and anger and yelling at people, and then emotionally manipulating your friends. He hadn't gotten to stage five yet, but um, but he was just kind of quiet and calculating. And I that that to me, and Doug will never admit that he knew what he was doing here. But I just think he was thinking through all of the ways in which he could get out of this. And I think he did care. And to Doug's credit, this is why I don't hate Doug like other people do, is I love that Doug is so passionate about the game. It's awesome mm -hmm. that he plays this hard, and it's awesome that he cares this much, and that's the thing that mo means the most to me. Um, and I think that's why, deep down, he knew he wanted to do whatever it took to, to stay in, to make this all pay off. And <laughs> I just think in that moment, he's calculating what he's doing, and he's just not ready. Yeah, go ahead. Did, did did Sadie text after the tribal had already happened after Delaram? I can't remember. Was it before? Oh, the texting technically happened like after. I actually the timeline of when it happened. It was probably yeah that night is when it was texted. Yeah. So yeah. it was before tribal when Delaram went home. Yes, that. So the way the timeline goes is final five tribal and then challenge right after for final four. The day after is final four tribal, um, and that is the night when Sadie for some reason, decides to text these people. Um, and then a few days later, like three or four days later, is Final Tribal. So this everything after Final Five Tribal takes place in a day, pretty much. It's just kind of wild to me that Doug did all of this, you know, which, like, then backtracks on, whatever. But, like, Santi and Tim know now that he's done this and they still keep him in. No, no, no. They don't get the text until after the final four tribal. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Doug is that's what I was trying. That's what I was trying to put like together after. Oh, I got it. And there's a plan of better dirt. Okay. Okay. At final four, at final five tribal, that day is when the challenge happens and when Doug texts Sadie okay. all of this garbage. The next day is when the final four tribal happens, and I need then. To charge. <laughs> 
Did you have a thought? Was it? What? It's confusing. <laughs> Wait, I, no, I think I got more confused based off of like what just like how you just explained it. Okay. We're not on sex gate yet. Let's just stick on sad gate as we're calling it. <laughs> Cry gate. Okay. Um, I mm. manipulate gate. Manipulate. 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 Just go on. The I the. I don't think that I like was, like Aaron had mentioned that she was like upset watching it. I don't think I was like upset because I think I saw right through it. I don't know if that's just me being like, an asshole, which is very likely, but. I saw right through what Doug was doing. I don't even think like Doug really recognized that he was being this manipulative person, but which I'm not saying he is a manipulative person, but this, in this situation, he was manipulating the situation and manipulating Santi's feelings because he knew he could, because he knew he was going to get the outcome that he wanted. And I feel like if you're going to do that, be the person, be that person. But I think Santi, it, it, it's Santi, it's hard to, like recognize that you're being that person and accept it because you think about manipulation you think about that as like such a negative thing and is neg negative but you don't want to be that person you don't want to be the negative person and you see it in other people and you're like those people are shitty people so when you have those tendencies you ignore it and you're like no that's not what i was doing i'm gonna rationalize the shitty thing that i just did because i'm not that person you know, I, there's no way that I can be that person. And I think that's what he was doing because he didn't want to believe that, that he was capable of that. And he also doesn't want to believe that he can be the villain that he yeah. sees in Survivor. You know, he, those people in Survivor who are manipulating people to get their way. He doesn't want to be that person. He doesn't want to be perceived that person or feel that he is that person. And that's why he oh, rationalized it in his mind, um, which is really frustrating. I did feel like emotional for Santi. Like I could feel that Santi was so genuine in the situation and he really did believe that, okay, stop giving me attention because I can't keep popping up and I can't focus on my thoughts. So <laughs> um, I believed like in what Santi was saying, but I didn't believe in what Doug was saying. The whole like, yeah. I think you know the answer to that. That is textbook manipulation. Like he was emotionally manipulating his friend and no one wants to believe that they have that in them, but they do. Everyone does. It's in everybody. Especially in these games, especially in these games. And all that came down to this Doug did not want to admit that he was the villain that he really was. Mm-hmm. Yep. I, yeah, I think I agree that that is kind of what ended up happening and how it came off. But I also like, it's so interesting because I'm coming at this from both like a viewer perspective, a fan perspective, and I also lived this. And it's, I was there. And so I like, I felt everything Doug was feeling in that moment. I get it. It is hard. And mm -hmm. I think that every step of the way he was being honest with what he was feeling. And yeah. I think that he, he could have come at it differently. He could have like, because I think in that aspect, it just comes down to like the friendship and it's, <laughs> he was prioritizing his feelings in the friendship over Santi's at that point. And I think that that's kind of where that was, but it made sense also because Santi had the power in both the game, like in the game in that moment, which like when you're blurring these lines, it's almost like, so he also has the power in the friendship at that moment. So mm. it's, it's like super complicated. It makes everything so much harder when friendships are involved. It makes everything so difficult. So I, I think that Doug was coming at all of this from an honest, from an honest place. And from like, I don't think he was going in with the intention of manipulation, but I don't think he was necessarily like trying to counteract it. Because yeah. Where there was kind of at that final tribal where, um, you know, he brought it up and like, he was like, you know, if this was going to be a long-term thing in our friendship and you know, so Doug was like, I said I would be mad for a few days. And Santi was like, I don't remember you putting a time frame on it. Like, I remember that whole moment. But there was, I did realize in their conversation, like, Doug did kind of say, like, you know, I would be, like, it would take at least a week for me to kind of feel through things. Which, which does make sense. And you do need processing time, like, when friendships are involved. And I get that. Uh, so I do want to actually touch on that because I mentioned it before we had started when it was just me and Anders. 
that specific moment is a huge moment for me where I realized he was manipulating Santi because he was saying like, Santi had made the comment, if you're not, if you're going to be mad for more than a few days, I don't want to do this. And Santi said, or Doug said, I think you know the answer to that. And then they continued the conversation. And then a little bit later, that's when Doug said, oh, well, after Santi had already made the decision that he wasn't going to do it, he had already decided, I'm not going to make this move. It's not going to happen. You can count on me at least not voting for you. That's when Doug went back and said, oh, well, I will be mad for a couple of days. That was Doug's way of being like, you are taking account, like Santi is taking accountability for all of the decisions he's making right now. I'm not pushing Santi to make this decision. He was doing that because he didn't want to have the blame of making Santi make this decision. It wasn't because he wasn't going to be mad in a couple of days. It was because he wanted to make sure that his hands were clean and Santi was making this decision all on his own, or at least Santi believed that, even if that wasn't the case. Like he, the decision was already made. And that's when he kind of recanted and was like, well, I'll be mad for a couple of days. But before that, he was like, I'm going to be mad. You know the answer to that. Before I even say it, you know that I'm going to be mad for a significant amount of time. And that's yeah. why I feel like it was just like he was manipulating the situation. I don't yeah. think it's like manipulation tactic. It was yeah. it, it's so textbook and so mm -hmm. straightforward. Like it's so obvious as a viewer and even as people mm -hmm. like obviously the people who are being manipulated, it's a different situation, but to the people around them, like you could see everything that was happening and uh, it just makes it so hard to to root for Doug or anything when he like can't he can't own it. He can't own it. That because honestly, it's it's Survivor. That's part of the game. He yeah. was playing. He was playing. Like just own that you did it. That's all you have to do. Like but oh, I it's not, it's not, it's honestly, you know, you. He, I, he approached it poorly. He did not come at it with text at all, but he did what he needed to do to say. If he would have just approached it a little bit differently, still using the manipulation tactics, like it could have been a great, it could have been just seen as a great move. Yeah. Like I agree with, with what Aaron said, where she said like all of the feelings that Doug had were real. I do feel that way. I do think yeah. he felt that way for sure going into the situation. But I think like, he is perceptive enough to know that he could use it to his advantage when he got into the conversation. I think like everything he felt was valid. It was real. He wasn't making up his feelings, but he knew when to use them and when to not use them. And he yeah, used right. them. Survivor's all about like, like survivors totally about partial truths and like what, what does honesty mean here? Because I, I think Brie, you highlighted a distinction I thought was really crucial too, is like he specific, like, to, in Doug's mind, I think he genuinely believes I might be mad for a few days. I might be mad for a month. I might never get over it. This means a lot to me. Yeah. But of course he's going to hint at the longer version of it because it, it behooves him to make mm -hmm. it seem as much towards that scale as possible, even though there's a much more realistic possibility. He just gets over it in a few days. And I think he definitely knew that and made that distinction in Final Tribal. And I went back and tried to get the receipts and he definitely did not specify it. To, and Santi was like, I don't remember us talking okay. specifics. Mm -hmm. Especially because like, when he went into it too, Santi made that distinction at the very beginning of the conversation. And that is when Doug used that to his advantage. I mean, he Santi said, if you are going to be mad for more than like a day or a few days, then I'm not going to do it. And that is what steered the conversation for Doug. That was and, what he used. And what's great about this too, is it is sort of poetic because there are two instances in this episode. It's like, this is how Doug is reacting. What if this were Santi and how would he handle it? One instance is Tim tells Santi about this plan to get him out that Doug was on board with, that Doug was a part of and saying like, yes, let's do this. And he wasn't keeping Santi in the loop. And Santi, against all judgment, always lets Doug know when he's potentially turning against him. And when he confronts Doug about it, Doug is, oh, it, he's minimizing it. He goes, I tell you this. And, like, it wasn't a serious thing. I didn't think I needed to tell you. It's, like, it's very easy for Doug to be, like, actually, no, you can't be mad at me because it's not a big deal, unlike what you're doing. And then – we get the moment where these texts come out. And the ironic thing is Doug hurts their friendship by doing this after they just didn't. And it's like Santi has every right in the world to be pissed because his friend has not only smack talked his game, but also is like 
pr- saying that he is manipulating them. And Santi feels incredibly hurt. And it takes Santi a day, an afternoon, really, to recognize how important this friendship is. It's like, mm-hmm. I'm not going to make any bigger, like, I'm not going to make anything bigger of it. But I'm going to say, like, the way that Santi handles this is a much more, he's he acts very mature through this all, despite how far it goes. And how mm-hmm. personal it becomes, and, and it's like a hero. And that it's it's literally, we'll get into this, but I think one of the big themes of this season is not only like the personal versus the strategic, but also it's a hero versus a villain. It's dog versus yes. Yeah. Yes, that's that's exactly what I was going to say. Like, I feel like what Doug should have done is just embraced his villain edit. Like, he is. I mean, he's a phenomenal player. He's someone that's like, just take everything away from it. He is so good at this game and he has the best grasp on it. But if he would have just embraced the player that he is, I think we would have respected it a little bit more. Whereas like we see these things unfolding after final four or at final four. And we're like, why are you being like this? Like, why aren't you like taking accountability for your actions prior to final tribal? Instead, he's like, backing out and like trying to avoid it and being like this like soppy like sappy person if he was just like i did that that was me and here are all the other moves i did i think that jury would have accepted it a little bit more and that's what it comes down to is you can't backtrack on the game you played and win mm-hmm. No, nope, you can't. You he, have to, like take accountability for it. Especially I think that what Anders said is perfect. It is the hero versus villain mm-hmm. in this story and really I think that that's why, I mean, I know that it's con- like there's different opinions around Santi's win, but I think that like Santi deserves the win because he was just as much a part of this entire narrative as Doug was. Yeah. And at the end of the day, it, Doug kind of, Doug handed him the win by, by his missteps, by not owning his game. Whereas Santi, just by being himself and being the hero, takes it. What I do want to say like in, in real time, like I really struggled that, from an outside perspective and not having seen everything that went down, it seemed like Doug controlled the game. Doug did all these things, right? Like it's hard to understand why Doug doesn't win from just a game perspective and uh, watching it actually man, you know, unfold here. And the way that Santi was very much, you can see his like mind switch when he's like expecting Doug to be like, I'm not going to like it, but it's okay to then the total opposite. The one thing I will say is that I don't think we can give Santi and Tim a total pass from a game perspective here because Survivor is all about manipulating the situation like Doug is doing here to your benefit. And I think there's a way that, you know, I think this gave them an easy out to keep the friendship and to justify this decision. But I think there is a way where you can say, Doug, that's not fair for you to put me in this situation. Like like the questions that came later about, you know, being your friendship is that strong. Like, why, why are we not going to get over this? Like I would get over it the same way. Like you've, and the same thing pointed out before, like Doug, you didn't fill me in on all the plans. Like, I think, I think it's on you as a game player to show how much you want this. You know that from a game perspective, there's a very clear decision here and you have to try to work the friendship element as much as you can to get to a place where you're comfortable with that. Or you just have to make a decision to sacrifice. And I, I certainly get the decision not to just throw away the friendship, but I think there's a way to rectify the two and pull them together. And I don't think Tim and Santi did that to the fullest extent. I also feel like the thing is Santi in the same way that Doug didn't want to believe he was being this manipulative person in that moment. Santi didn't want to believe that Doug was being that person. So I don't know if he could have even like taken it out of that friendship like element and seen it from a game perspective because he would never believe that Doug would use that to his advantage. So it's hard to like just discount. I mean, obviously from a game perspective, what he should have done was say that, but it, we, it, it's like impossible. You can't know what you're gonna, how you're gonna react in that situation. No one wants to believe that their best friend and their roommate is gonna manipulate their feelings to get to the end. They just, they don't believe that. I mean, obviously Santi immediately figured out that that was the case afterwards, but there's no way for him to know that until something like those text messages proves it. Yeah, not to pile on Tim though, but like I get Santi in the moment, it's really hard to push back on that very emotional conversation. Mm-hmm. Tim's just talking to Santi about it. And I feel like you could be like, all right, bro. Like, do we really have to go through with this? Like, <laughs> no. He was like, okay, I guess we're not voting Doug then. All right. At the very least, he could have made it go to fire. I mean, yeah. The yeah, yeah, yeah. I was shocked about that too. All he had to do was vote and tie it. Like, it really doesn't make any sense. But I do think like 
I mean, I guess we could talk about it later, but I'm going to forget about it if I don't say <laughs> it. Um, at Final Tribal, I think what set Santi apart from the other two was that he was self-aware and he knew his flaws in the game and he recognized like when he fell short and when he didn't. Whereas like Doug spent the whole time sulking and Tam spent the whole time being like, I'm better than the two of these people combined. So I think they were like- Not being specific, just very general yeah, term. Yeah, so Doug wasn't embracing what made him a great player because he didn't want to believe that he was that player that he was being painted as. And Tim was like, I am going to tell everyone that I am the best player here. I'm the best player in the world. And you guys are going to have to listen to it. I'm not going to give you any examples, but I am going to tell you that I am the best player here. And so like, it was just like completely different sides of the aisle. And then Santi was sitting here like, I, I fucked up here. I did well here. Like, let's move on, you know? Yeah, Thanks. I think what yeah, I think what it boiled down to was that like, it, Doug didn't come out into Final Tribal proud of his game. Like, mm -hmm. that's why he wasn't taking accountability. Yeah. That's why he wasn't owning it, because he wasn't proud of himself for the way he acted. He yeah. was not happy with it. He, like, he said as much going into Final Tribal. He was like, this is not how I wanted to get here. Yeah. This is not how it should have happened. And so I think, honestly, Santi winning was the best thing that could have happened for Doug and Santi's friendship. Like, and just the kind of life going forward. And I think it's also important to remember that, like, yeah, Tim maybe could have said something of, like, yeah, but is it good to, like, keep this guy around? We should at least try to get rid of him. But this is what, this is fall semester, right? So, yeah. like, Santi has to live with Doug for a whole nother semester. So like, awesome. the same room. Like, I think that the risk, like, even any risk of jeopardizing that friendship, of jeopardizing but any it's over a game for a hundred dollars. And if you are that shitty that like that is going to ruin your friendship, it wasn't a real friendship. You know, I I mean no, on the no. same token, if you're willing to do, like, if you're willing to jeopardize this friendship for a game for $100, then that's also very shitty. Yeah. Like, at, least but I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, we saw what happens, and that's what made Santi the hero of the situation, because he wasn't willing to, while Doug was perfectly willing to threaten him with it. You know, one thing I want to say uh, on, on this matter, and like, with Doug backtracking from his game and not being proud of it is that I think that one thing we need to, and this is something that like I've had to face is that we need to destigmatize being a villain in survivor games because I struggle with says, that. He says this as he gets painted as the villain every time he plays a game. And then he's like, why am I the villain? Okay. 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 <laughs> You're a villain. <laughs> No one's criticizing on it being a villain um, here. No one's like it because that's I, what these games are, and that's what they bring out in us. You know, you have to. There are certain people that get to the end by playing early, or sorry, early dirty. Oh, why is it early? By playing dirty, by being manipulative, by uh, being. There are people who play snaky. There are people who play in ways that are not outwardly favorable. However it's still great gameplay in terms of what is going on. And we all sign up for that. Oh, okay. <laughs> we, all no, I, we all sign up for these, for these mm -hmm. games. So, you know, everybody has different natural skill sets in what's going to take them, them to the end. And if yours happen to be a little more villainous, then like you use it and own it at the end. I mean, I agree with you. I agree with you 100%, but you also are going into a game knowing your fate, your win is determined by other people. Mm -hmm. So you have to, like, it's not it's not the whole, like, I don't know if you're concerned about, like, the audience stigma on villains, because the audience loves villains, right? That's what you want to watch. Well, I, I don't know. I don't know what Doug's concern was here. Well, I know. I don't, here's the thing. I don't think Doug's concern was about being mm -hmm. a villain. I don't think it was about the way he played the game. I think it was fully, because you keep talking about, like, I, I honestly don't think that any of his emotional manipulation was intentional. I don't think it was calculated. I don't think it was, like, that's just how he was reacting in the moment. That was all honest. That was all true to himself. And how it came out, sure, that's what got him well, to the end. But wasn't that's there something about it in the text messages with Sadie? Yeah. I think that's, that's, and that's where I, I'm, the disconnect is for me. Yeah. Yeah. Because I mean, he says, did you like how I was... Wait, Emily. <laughs> um, but 
He doesn't. He never says in the text that he's going to manipulate his friends. And I think, Josh, I don't think Doug lost this game because he's a big, mean villain. I think it's. Oh my god. If, <laughs> oh my god. Been, what? What a blindside. <laughs> that is. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> uh, Apologies. Brady and Chloe cameo from Survivor Michigan season three. From to yeah. to to V. I was gonna say Tahiti. Yeah. But that's not right. Tahiti. Yeah, me and Chloe. We were Tahiti. Aaron wasn't. Okay. No, we're straight. Let's give. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> wow, we love that. We love those Michigan people. The most ambitious crossover event of the year. Um. Yeah. Well, I don't think people didn't vote for Doug because he was a mean, bad person. I think it was because. He, we said it. He didn't own any of it. He didn't want to. And for whatever reason, Doug never wanted to be the villain. He wanted to view himself as the hero in the Eric versus him situation. He wanted to view himself as the hero uh, with the whole Sadie situation. He didn't want to take part in getting rid of her, acknowledging that it was a good move for his game. Like yeah. Doug is unwilling, for whatever reason, to acknowledge he is the bad guy. He is the person who is betraying others and being manipulated. And that's I think, why he loses. And I, I think people punish ambivalence. Like you gotta, you gotta own on one side or the other. People love to take a stand. The world is polarized. You know, like that's just the way that we operate. And yep. when you try to have it both ways, like Doug was having, trying to have his cake and eat it too. This finale, and um, <laughs> oh, poor, I feel like Aaron's just like a like a motions truther here. Like just like <laughs> is is speaking for the feels. Look, Aaron's cried a lot on Survivor. She has a lot of experience with it. It's I true. also cried a lot, but I do feel like, I mean, I can see Doug. We've all cried in game. Yeah, I okay. All um, I like. I do see Doug's gameplay, like, f as my own. Like that's how I play games. I like it's the social aspect and like the manipulation aspect is what I'm not as good a strategy as I am at like manipulating people. <laughs> so that's what I harp on. And I think that's what like he was best at in this game. And I feel like it's not, it's outwitting. That's literally one of the biggest pillars in this game is you're trying to outwit these people and outwitting is another word for manipulation. Just that's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> like that's what this game is. You're manipulating people. Just be honest with it. And move on. But I do want to say, because we did like, we kept coming back to Santi and saying, like, you know, you don't want to jeopardize that friendship for a hundred dollars. Like, what was Tim's excuse? He doesn't have to live with Doug for six more months. Like, what was Tim's excuse for not letting it go to fire? It just doesn't like it's not connecting in my mind, especially because he wanted him out before then. So where like I, I really don't understand where he was coming from, why he decided, why he didn't even have a conversation with Doug and decide, well, he might've, I don't know what you guys put in there, but he didn't even have a conversation with Doug where he was like, you're doing this to me. I may, I might be mad at you for a while, Tim. That didn't happen. So why does he just take what Santi's telling him Doug said and running with it? Like, why not make his own distinction? Even if he listened to Santi and Santi was like, I'm not gonna vote for Doug. He could be like, that's great. I respect you. I respect what you're doing. I'm going to do this because it's the best for my game. So I'm going to. I think it was the buildup of like Doug was doing a, a much smaller degree of this manipulation for weeks. Like we heard Tim talk about like, oh, uh, like I could probably should get Doug out. But like he said, he'd be so mad at me and he'd never get over it. Like he's, he said that weeks ago, he planted that seed. And yeah, I think. Was he the one that was like, was he, did he say that to, I can't remember if he said it to Tim or if he said it to Dane. Where he like whispered to him and he was like, I'm gonna fucking kill you or something. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Which again, so funny because again, this is that final six where he can still go vote it out. He turns to Tim and goes, I will kill you. Like <laughs> so funny. He's on your side and he was pissed at you. Like it it's so funny because you just watch these and go, if I'm Tim and my person that I'm risking my game for turns to me and goes, I will kill you, it's like <laughs> you do. I can kill you right now. He's literally a like like a mobster. Like that. Yeah. Doug was literally just like this godfather in this game, and he literally follows it up. Like right before the downfall of Doug, he's like, "I will kill you if you cross me. I'm gonna kill you." And everybody was Damn. like, "I should go to rocks for him." Like, what if we? He's nice. He didn't just let my life. Doug was a nice guy. Like, um. <laughs> Well, well, before we continue on this, we should talk about Delaron because I think after all the crimes, oh, yeah, like, that one. 
emotional <laughs> manipulation. We get Delron being like, so this plan should be pretty simple. It's Doug. And then suddenly it's not Doug. And you care about friendship. What, are we all going to sit together and it's going to be rainbows? No, it's survive. Like, in that moment, I was so like, oh, my God. Thank like, she's so pissed. And I shared in that feeling, like, what is happening? This makes no strategic sense. Like, why is everyone flipping on this? That tribal is so cathartic in a way of just Delrom attacking them. Just saying what so we're bad. all thinking. I mean, she's right, though. I mean, she she might not be great at articulating her thoughts, her plans or anything like that. But she is she had the most self-awareness in this game. Like she knew what was going on. It's just like she didn't necessarily follow up with it. You know, she had and some like, good self-awareness at final four. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Right. I mean, she knew what the right move was and nobody was listening to her and i that's a really tough feeling when you are like this is the right thing to do why aren't you guys seeing that this is the right thing to do and nobody's listening to you that's very frustrating and also to be I, just like the only woman no left. <laughs> <laughs> well you're wrong austin there's no s it's just idiot <laughs> yeah oh, that's actually cool. wait my no favorite one, Anders, quote, i'm including you this time oh <laughs> uh, thank you my favorite quote from delrom was like I've said idiot so much, I should just tattoo it on my forehead. It's like, then you would walk around with a big idiot on your forehead. That's okay. Oh my point. God. What a um, queen. Sorry, continue about the about Delaram and her yelling no one listening to her. Me? Yes. Well, was that the no, end of the thought? I mean, I was going to just say, because this might be a hot take. I don't care. Um being the only woman left in the game and being so discounted by all of the men left in the game was really frustrating to watch. I think she it was the only one that had the most correct read on the game and knew what the right decision was and none of them listened to her. And I think that's really frustrating. It had to be really frustrating for her to be the only woman and to just be completely dismissed. And that's very frustrating. It was very frustrating to watch. I'm just always of the belief that there's something you can do in Survivor to at least try to claw your way out. Mm -hmm. But in her shoes, like you, you think you have it all set up and it makes so much sense. And then there's when to be told that there's literally nothing you can do and it makes no sense at all. Like, it's just such a sense of injustice that like, ah, yeah. I would just like bang well, my head into a wall. It was, a boys club. It was their voice club of three friends that were already friends. And again, everybody knew this. Everybody mm -hmm. knew this. And they let them get that close to the end together. Yep. You, you wrought this upon yourself. Exactly. You know, I mean, really, yes, Tim should have sent Doug to fire. That was the smart move in terms of actually going for a win. But Tim did not have his finger on the pulse. He had no, he, he, but did it's not didn't hit, he didn't have he his thinking cap on. He, uh, he someone needs to win one because I don't know when one in this game. But <laughs> what his like, first like mindset, though, I mean, in his defense, it was very on brand for Tim to be like, no, no keep those women away from the final tribal because they're going to get the woman vote. <laughs> yeah. Which is so funny. Because because all of jury. Amanda would definitely vote for a woman. That's for sure. So. <laughs> okay. She, look, Amanda has only voted for women, so it would not be. Yeah, say, he's used to writing women's names down. So look, it's yeah. just funny to me because it's like, if Angie gets to the end, she's getting all the women's votes. Uh, no, she's getting everyone's votes, but like, you no, I'm getting the end. It's not automatically getting every woman's vote. Like, it's it's very reductionist, but also like Tim. That's because you don't know these women well enough to identify what they care about, and you go, mm, "They all women. They like each other because women. Because yeah. women. That's it. I mean, he's like they, you know, are girls, so they must have things in common. I'm like, but buddy, come on. Like any other thing. To be fair, there have been two all female trios, but like they're good, and that's different. And all men trio is disgusting. And it I really is. I mean, you're not wrong. Are yeah. you? Is one of them the one that turned on each other in final six, and then none of them won? <laughs> no, the the two all female were. Oh, you mean in the season? Delron in this season, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. And then the all male one is the final three. Yeah, to go yeah. from season six where the final four are all women to this season where the final three are all men, I really was like. Oh, uh, this is not the equality I wanted. <laughs> yeah, I loved it when people were like, wow, Anders, Austin would have never had all three final three women in this season. And then I was like, just you wait one season. You will never, you will regret saying that forever. 
I never oh, had three. You let people say that about you? Not like, really. But you never right. let women make it. Oh, to the- would never. <laughs> I'm famous. Have to find friends. your address. <laughs> I know, like. <laughs> yeah, often Final Four Challenge is really fucked up. It was, are you a man? If you are, you get immunity. It was always <laughs> fucked up. It was almost, <laughs> Thurman Trials Final Five was a tough Final Five Challenge, but it was a backup, oh so it's fine. Um, well. Well, it's, anyways, yes. They did have some, we- Tim had some weird sort of idea that women at the end would get all women's votes, which was <laughs> stupid, but there were six women jurors and two men jurors. So one so, achievement. But, but he, you can't. The reason that they would have won is not because they're women. The no. reason they won is because they were good players who deserve to be there. So that's why yeah. I'm like, but like, I yeah. get what you're saying. You're here's the mark that you're trying to be on. You're just, just off. Um, but we see that we see that moment, and Delaram is not surprised to see herself go. Um, it was a frustrating tribal to live through and to watch, but. <laughs> she's in uh, she's in jury and you know Delrom's obviously pissed of the whole thing but she doesn't she's not sour grapes like she's not furious and screaming at them she saves that for final tribal mm-hmm. final tribal i think i forget who it's at maybe austin of like this is how we all felt and like it's it's sort of a pro, it's allowing the audience to sort of feel cathartic in this moment of them yelling at the final three and whatnot i personally kind of hated a part of it like my least favorite questions were Sadie, Abby, and Delaron because it's this weird thing where the onus was all on Sa- Santi and Tim. They're like, you kept your friend around. Like, there was nothing any of us could do, blah, blah, And it's like, but Doug, you should get our vote. It's like, if you have an issue with the choosing to keep a friend, why are you not mad at the person who made them make that choice? And I recognize, like, we can make an argument of why they still couldn't, like, they still could have done otherwise. But, you know... Doug didn't make it easy, and Doug threatened the friendship in a way, in a very subtle way. So it's just weird to blame them and still want to vote for Doug but be mad at the situation. I but think also- it's not- Go ahead, yeah. Okay, I just think it's not only that, just so much of, like, there. it just felt like whining that this was the final three when, like, again, they are putting all of this blame on Santi and Tim. But, like, most of the blame rests on the jury. Most of the blame rests on the people that let them get that far. And it's just insane to me that they are putting all of this on, like, just the final four, on, like, just what happened last. And they're like, you let Doug get here. Well, guess what? You let all of them get there. You guys, the jury, let all of them get that far. You're the reason that they had to make this decision in the first place. So the fact that they were just, like, direct, and and I get it, like, as a juror, you're like, I have no faults. I played a perfect game. That's why I got voted out. But like, it's just, it was so frustrating to me that the jury felt no responsibility at all. My no. biggest pet peeve, and I will say for all future survivor, college survivor contestants or whatever format you're going to play in, do not say, okay, now it's my time to roast you guys. Because A, it creates like a really high bar that you to set for yourself. Like Sue Hawk roasted in season one roasted kelly (laughs) micah roasted molly for better or worse you don't just you like you have to do the roast you don't say you're gonna do the roast because if it's not good a you set yourself up for failure and b i just think like it shows like this entitlement that like yes it's your jurors time to say your piece and get whatever you feel but it just feels so inorganic when you're like now's my time to just you know spitfire you guys and make you look bad and feel bad and it just like all of it all of it didn't feel very organic at all. And that they just were planning to say the same things over and over. None of them were original. And like, it, it makes you, it like requires you to think that you're on the right side of history. And then, you know, everything that happened and that, you know, how these people played. And most of the time you don't know like half of what actually went on. Mm-hmm. That's why you're a juror most of the time. So yep. I just think it's a, a, that kind of framing that people use a lot of times. And to be clear, I did like Abby making the line about Jasmine and, and there were some fun moments within it, but like, I just think it's a hard bar and a, a tough, look to set yourself up by saying that i actually before we go more into the final uh final tribal i <clears throat> we skipped over text gate which i personally i didn't even know if i should include this because it's so it was such a sudden and horribly dark moment uh really in this game like final four tribal happens and i'm disappointed obviously but it is whatever suddenly i get texts from santi and tim being like 
Sadie just texted us and uh, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, why did Sadie text you? What did she text you? They sent me screenshots. And then I texted Sadie and like, why did you text them? And I texted Doug, why did you text Sadie? It was one of the, it was awkward because it's like, at that point, I make it very clear to the players, like, you should not be texting the jurors. Jurors, you should not be texting the players about the game. Like, you aren't separated. You have these phones. I know you're friends, but it's a part of the game and you need to separate. Yep. And when this happens, it's like the one you can, you can obviously kick Sadie out of the jury and remove Doug from the final three. But it's like, it feels almost too much. Like, I feel like doing that robs it all. I feel like it completely uh, delegitimizes any win that might happen by then being like, well, if Doug were there, he would have won. It's like, then it just delegitimizes if Santi or Tim wins. And it's also like, I felt it was also a way for Doug to not be able to take credit for the horrible things that he did. Like, I feel like pretending that his emotional manipulation was some sort of move beyond like what it was, was unfair. And I think to play both sides by being emotionally manipulative, but also telling everyone or pretending that you're doing this, like to keep your friendship, but then telling other people you're doing it. Otherwise it's like, you're picking a lane here. Um, you can't play both sides. Oh no, um, I, mean, I, Aaron, I was going to say, you have to ask her this question first of all. Yeah, people really, oh yeah. I mean, it, I was, from Aaron. but, uh, it was obviously a very awkward night. And, uh, Aaron, how did you feel watching this moment? You have some experience with texts and revealing them. <laughs> yeah. Um, it was interesting to me because there is a lot of, I was upset at like the rule violation. I think that's why I was kind of most comfortable with what happened at final tribal was like, I think that's what I would most hold against Doug was texting Sadie. But in my opinion, I think Sadie texting Santi and Tim was far worse than so Doug texting. That's so much worse. Um, and it's yeah, also the I, third time this season that she has done a texting mishap. First yeah. time with Mike, second time with Josh. And yeah. it's just like. That's but this it, time is like actually like it, it hurts the integrity of the game. It's like. It's, yeah. Which sucks. Changed, I think she really did change the end. Like the she ending. Did. Exactly. The which is so yeah, sucky. Irony. And like, yeah. Which I was rich for what she came in saying at Final Tribal Council. Exactly. And yeah. And not only does that, like, not only like with the integrity of the game and everything, and I hated the rules violation, but like, uh, like, yeah, I felt for, I felt for Santi, man. Like I felt for him in that moment. Cause yeah, I do have experience of like, it, it never feels good to, to have that come to light you never especially somebody that you think is your friend especially somebody that is actually your best friend and you know you see all of these texts about you know them saying shit about you and i i do think that that it heavily discounts anything that happened with like doug feeling bad like doug being because like that wasn't just i feel like that was just that wasn't sadness speaking like if doug was actually just sad about after like final five or final four challenge of like i'm gonna be going home like you wouldn't be texting somebody on the jury and be like yeah it's so shitty that i'm going home like i you know manipulated these people the whole game and that does i think heavily discount what happened there um with with his you know his reaction to everything mm -hmm. um but yeah so i do think manic. it's I do think it's much worse that Sadie texted Santi and Tim. Mm -hmm. It was also like crushing to watch Santi at final tribal, like speak to Doug and be like, you're the like, re like you're kind of souring this experience for me right now. Like no. you yeah. took away an opportunity for me to like enjoy this. And like, you're not even really taking responsibility for that. I, I thought that was really sad to watch but also like it needed to be said and i'm glad that dane made them say that i think that was really necessary in that situation i also i typically don't really like when jurors come in and they're like i want you to roast the other two people on um like in final tribal with you um usually i, I don't love that but i think in this situation it needed to be said and i think that it finally separated santi from doug so i think that was a big moment for for Santi and, and for him winning was, was that um, question. Mm -hmm. 
It's yeah. It, yeah. Go ahead. It was a really important question there to ask, and and to not in the sense of just like roast them for fun, but like you need to show that you can separate yourself from him and look what he's done to you, and you should do that back, and he deserves it. Anders, I was going to say, I think a lot of people have been asking about what happened on the rule violation and like whether there was discussion. Honestly, I don't remember. I'm sure we had discussions of like what to do there, but the only thing I can, I, I was honestly going to this finale fully expecting that Sadie either wasn't going to vote or there was going to be a vote penalty for Doug. And I was like, I, in my mind, I'd remember that happening. So that was not the case. I'm, I'm assuming you very clearly told the jury what happened. And the oh, oh my him. God. I'm not one to not hide my feelings to the jury. Um, first of all, when I brought I brought Doug in to confess one, like, look, here's the deal. You broke the rules. I'm allowing you to stay, but you are going to have to apologize to everyone about this. I also told Sadie she has to apologize. I also told the jury what happened in their Ponderosa group chat because I wanted it to be clear, like, this was a rules violation. These two are responsible. I want everyone to be aware. I wasn't saying at all, one way or the other, you cannot vote for Doug. But if you are, or if you're going to come at this at any point of view, you need to be aware of it. So Doug had to apologize for breaking the rules. Sadie had to apologize. I cut that part out because, like, we didn't need to hear it again. But, yeah, like, in my mind, it, it I allowed Sadie to speak because I do feel like she, you know, she got, she did play this game, uh, she should get her speech and her vote. But I also want it to be tainted and clear, like, she did break the rules. She had a point that she wanted to make, but it's also, like, how can you stand there and preach something when you not only broke the rules, but also participated in this? Like, you are not some innocent person speaking the truth. You are someone who has played this game, broken a rule, and people should look at it through that lens. Yeah. It's um, not even a small rule, either. This is, like, a big thing that really decided the outcome of the game I it's yeah. And, it and really here's tough. the thing: someone, people have said like, "Is this the first time anyone's ever texted someone in the jury?" Like, obviously not. It's happened. But what makes it different is like, there was no reason to involve the other two finalists no and reason. make them feel like shit just yes. because you were angry. That is projection about your feelings mm -hmm. onto them. If you want to, in your final tribal speech, make that claim, whatever, that's fine. But when you text someone out of the game when it's already been decided. You're dumb, and here's why you're dumb. Here's all the proof. It's like, what is your goal here? To make yeah. them feel bad? Feel like shit. It it's one thing, thing. It's it's one thing to just say it, but to show them text, it's like your your uh, intention is bad. It is a bad thing to do, Yeah. and it should not be seen in any other way besides this is a bad action. It's and mean. Broke, it's, it's, it is, it's mean. Yeah, it's really – like I can't – find any other reason she didn't do it to be like i just want you guys to know like this is being said and and i don't yeah. agree with it blah 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 she did it to be mean it was yeah. it was a mean action it it didn't need to be done and it soured the final tribal for them so it i was, just bad it, it was, was just bad them. she could have potentially ruined a friendship between yeah. two roommates long term they could have never spoken again after this like she doesn't know what the outcome would have been no. at all exactly it's really sad, it's really sad. and it's it was very mean, much yeah. like it was very much like she was angry about the situation and she was like i i would not have made the same move she claims to and like she just wants them to feel the same anger that she is feeling but it's it was just an unneeded thing to do is is really the thing it's just a damaging thing to do and unneeded mm -hmm. i agree well and you know we keep talking about uh doug losing final tribal council because of not owning his game but i think that this all is very much just as much part of it as well you know the the ruin literally this that whole interaction really did ruin the integrity of the entire ending of the game mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. on, on both of their ends yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. I honestly think that, especially like, I think uh, quite a few of those votes for Santi were not necessarily for Santi so much as against Doug. Against yeah. Doug. Yeah. 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 Especially, yeah. Brand, yeah. Galaxy especially. brain take is that Sadie wanted Doug to lose, and she made it happen. Yeah, but it's like, <laughs> oh, but you can't do that. And even if that's the intention, yeah. like, yeah. I, okay. I, 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 
disagree a little bit on the these are all protest votes for Doug. Not I think all, not all for sure, but definitely like the two that voted for Tim, like Amanda and Dane. No, their but I, vote going to no, their second vote going to Santi. Oh, yes. I think yes. was more in as against Doug. I don't think that their first vote for Tim was necessarily anti Doug, but I do think that their re vote was. I think that the one thing that was unsatisfying to me about Final Tribal watching it back is that I would have loved to see Santi really grab it by the horns and in the moment, like totally own it and make it between him and Doug. And yeah. I do think it was a lot more of like Doug and not Doug. And like, like, yeah. like honestly, the thing that like Tim did not do a good job at Final Tribal, but that he did flip the entire Final Tribal when he came up with the idea that if you are mad at Doug about the Final Four and everything, don't vote Doug, vote one of us. He's the one who said that first. And Santi did a really good job of latching onto that and building on that argument. But I, I like, I just like, I, I think Santi did a, a certainly a better job overall, but it wasn't like ever in the moment. Like it became Santi kind of taking the reins from Doug and flipping them. That would have been, I think so much more satisfying to really see him own that. And for all the hate on Terry, like Terry did take final tribal and like make it his own and make it his own story. And, I don't think we totally saw that here, which was the one thing that left me a little bit unsatisfied. I mean, it yeah. Wasn't I, unsatisfying final tribal for mm -hmm. as intense of a season yeah. as this has been. Absolutely. It yeah. did not. Uh, I mean, I think that, I think Santi's deserving of the win. And I think that what we saw was like great TV, but in terms of gameplay, it really, it fell a little flat in the end. I, I completely agree. Yeah. Oh, go ahead, Brie. I was just going to say, like, I I think I said this at the beginning. I don't remember if I said it before or after we started recording. But, I mean, this really is just, like, the jury projecting their mistakes onto the final three. Or, more specifically, the two. You know, like, I think that Tim and Santi got the attacks because people were, like, recognizing that they couldn't make those moves either. And so they were like, I, I am already out of the game. You know, I don't have to take responsibility for it. I don't have to answer for it. But these two do because they're here. So I'm going to attack them because they made the same mistakes that I did. But they're, they made it farther than me. So that's I don't understand how they could have made it farther than me because they made the same mistakes that I did. So it's just like I, a whole host of like projecting and I don't love it. I yeah. think Tim made this point during Final Tribal uh, or, or maybe with Santi, one of them saying like that – Final Tribal should have been more about their games and why they should have won rather than harping on Final Four. But yeah. to the credit, like, I think Josh, Angie, Dane, Amanda, uh, and Morgan all did a good job of asking game questions to get more information. Like, mm -hmm. I think Amanda's was a really good question. I think that Angie's was a really good question. When she asked Doug why the other two should win, I think Dane did a really good job by having yeah. them Yep. Give their expressive opinions. I like Josh's. Uh, yeah, don't forget Josh channeling Tyra Banks. Yes, of course. Part. We were all rooting for you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> is, like, but if you see like Josh's question that was about gameplay influenced his vote. Like he made his decision based on what he heard at Final Tribal. Whereas right. the rest of them like were just sour. I mean, they didn't even use their opportunity to ask questions that were going to influence their vote. They just wanted to shit all over everybody. Whereas like I Josh, think I think Angie was influenced by the yeah yeah but this one's the if we're taking the people that did ask valid questions Dane too Dane absolutely yeah. voted because of the way that so they answered yeah. but I think what's what's underlying too in these votes is what we do see is uh, these people voted based on who they had the best relationship with I think that mm -hmm. the questions obviously help but I think Dane this is my theory Dane's sort of speaking about. Doug broke the rules. He should not be rewarded. Gave everyone the reason to vote for the person that they had the best connection with without feeling guilty of being just claimed like you're playing personally. Like, yeah. Santi got Morgan, Angie, Josh, Tim got Dane and Amanda. These are all people that they were close with. Yeah, I mean, personally, I thought the game questions were meaningless, except for the fact that they gave people a... Like, Santi basically had to do enough to convince people like Josh who wanted to vote for them that there was a game justification. Sure, and yes. I think Final Tribal, like, especially in College Survivor, is way more important than in the real show in terms of people don't know a lot. And so it all comes down to this. But the strange thing is, and this one in particular, when they go on so long that people just can't, like, consume all of the content. Like, this is one of the shortest tribals I've had. The This one? Yes. Oh, I remember it being very long, but it might no, be. No, this was like an hour. 
Dylan Robb's question alone was an hour. There's no chance. It was not the, an hour. I tried to go back to the like scene. An hour I, just, long. I don't I know mean, about yeah. that. Regardless, Actually, though, like, I, think, I think that, like, people can't get whatever, whatever it was it was a lot it was very intense so if it was short whatever but the point is that like people can only consume very small bits that they actually think like they only think in the whole meal about what their best bite was and like santi's justification about pre-merge gameplay was like enough to get people going there and honestly the, the question like the point of if you guys are mad at doug for the gross stuff that happened here don't vote for him vote for us like those key storylines i think did it more than anything else and like I appreciated the game questions, and I think they did help illuminate insight. But those two were never going to win a game conversation over Doug. Like you can't, you can't conceivably say that they played a better game than Doug. It's it's not possible in this context. So, but like, I, I really did a good job shaping the narrative and making the story not about Doug's game when it very easily could have been. Yeah. I completely agree. I think they did have to find that balance because, like, yeah, there were only those key moments, and I think that that did play to the benefit of Santi, especially, and then Tim, of like that not every question was about game. Because maybe that's why Tribal Council was so short. Because it was either about, like, the friendship stuff or it was about game of which, like, Doug was kind of, again, on his apology tour. And then Santi and Tim didn't have much of a game to talk about. Because Santi's was all pre-merge. And if you're giving somebody the win based on their pre-merge game, then, like, that's that's not great. Oh, I, will, I will argue a little bit there. I don't yeah. think that Santi's game was solely pre-merge. I don't think no. that he, I think that there is some credit owed to him and throughout throughout the entirety of the game. I mean, yes, Doug was in the driver's seat, but that doesn't mean that Santi wasn't still playing. You know, yeah, yes. I agree, I agree. I think the Sadie move was definitely Santi, but what's funny is in Final Tribal, Tim took credit for that. Tim yeah. took more credit for the Sadie Maybe move. when people do that. Yes. That, that, yeah. It goes back to self-awareness and that like, mm -hmm. and that's, because I feel like we have spent a lot of time saying, like, I don't know if it's intentional. I mean, it's just kind of going along with the narrative that Santi won exclusively because of the circumstances. But I don't think that's the case. I think that there are circumstances that did prevent Doug from winning. But I think that if that were the case, then Tim could have won too. But Santi played a better game. In my well, I think that, I think that part of the issue with it is that, and, and why we're having this debate even, is that Santi didn't express Not his game well enough in Final Tribal mm -hmm. Council because it was there. You know, mm -hmm. I I don't think he should have beaten Doug that's sitting with each other if you're, if you're just going based on gameplay. Yes. Yeah. However, Santi, I think his game still stands on his own. And if you didn't have Doug sitting there, I think with anybody that was in that final five, yeah. that final six, Santi still deserved that actual win. The problem mm -hmm. was when we actually see him in this final tribal council, he doesn't, he, he didn't know how to express that. None of them did though. And I feel like he, at least he came in with a level of self-awareness that wasn't present with the other two. And I think like that's what propelled him going forward. And it's something that like the more rational jury members valued in the situation is that like they wanted him to take accountability for the fact that like, yeah, you were a threat pre-merge, but during merge, you were quiet. So, like, why was that? And explain why that was. And that's why he ended up winning. Because, I mean, it, Amanda voted for Tim first, right? And then she flipped and voted for Santi. So, I feel like that, the, in her answer, or in her question, she said, like, you played this game. Was it her? Morgan said, you sort of became quiet. Why was that? Yeah, why was that? And then who did she vote for? Santi. I mean, I think that it is impressive that Santi, like both Tim and Santi got zero votes, but Santi was name dropped as a target a million times mm -hmm. pre-merge and at merge, and he never yeah. received it. Never um, received a vote. Never received a vote. And I, I do, to Josh's point, like Santi has been one of the most important pieces to Doug's game. Mm -hmm. The Liam vote was absolutely crucial for Santi to be a part of. Yeah. Um, Santi needed to be a part of the Sabi decision because Doug was never going to be willing to do it. Santi needed to be a part of the Abby decision because he didn't have the relationships with Abby and Delaram, and yes. Doug did, and Santi did. And Santi, uh, I mean, final six, I don't think we can really credit as a good move for Santi, but like, 
it's about uh, Santi is a loyal person and stubborn, and that is just another example. It's also of- not on Santi to flip there. That's not his his point no. to flip. Like he Tim's argument about being on the bottom if he flips is actually true for Santi, and I, I do agree that that Santi played a, a strong game and I very impressive pre merge game showed a lot of capabilities and like really adapted well. And the way he expressed it before Final Tribal. I feel like with his managing his perception and threat level was the best he summed it up the whole episode and he didn't do as good of a job. But to his credit, Final Tribal was so all over the place and he's getting completely attacked that like, of mm-hmm. course you don't get your points across. It's like hard to keep yourself composed there. Yeah, I and, do think and- like, it's, it's unfortunate because I think that Doug takes, I think he did it in the text. Like he said that he kind of like took Santi's uh, resources and he used them for himself. But they were Santi's resources that he built himself. Like they were his relationships and his connections that were only or his and only his that Doug re- like took and resourced. But they were Santi's to begin with, and they were his connections to begin with. Without Santi, I don't think Doug would have had the potential in this situation specifically to get as far as he did. Because I think Doug- more targeted him. Doug does not have a relationship with Josh, does not have a relationship with Andy without Santi. And those two people are what kept Doug from being reliant on Sadie and her trio that would have taken Doug out. Um, out. And I think in the same vein, Tim is also an incredibly important player to Doug's game. Like you can, we can say what we want about Tim's game. Um, I think this is a, a classic study of someone who has a lot of information and a lot of options that doesn't do anything with them. Mm-hmm. He is the one who has Dane. He is the one who has Amanda. He has Angie at the later part of this game. And he has the potential to flip away from Santi and Doug. And he never does. He never makes a move that would benefit him over the other two. But he was the one with the potential to do it. So it really is like Tim does have the the meat shield game. He does have the uh, bottom players, underdog, whatever game. And he just never utilizes anything. Which is just yeah, I don't think he realized he was playing that game. That's part that's, of the problem. Like, right. He sold his game, but not as the, his game was. He was selling his game as a completely different game, and that's why it, it was transparent. That's why people didn't respect it and vote for him. That was why. So I feel exactly. like, and that I mean, at the end of the day, like none of them should have gone to the end with one another. There was no. no, no. There was. All of their games were so intertwined that it was hard to separate them. And like Doug should have never gone to the end with Santi and Tim because people are saying like you took these resources from Santi and Tim to get to where you are. I mean, to be fair, I think Doug could have sat next to Tim, had no problem. It yeah, was Santi, yeah. But he could not. Be but, yeah, and then same for Santi. People are saying like you only. Uh, same with Santi and um, Tim. Both of them, they are saying like you got here because of Doug, or you brought Doug to the end. Blah blah blah. <laughs> It's none of them really had a shot at being the star in this yeah. final Bible because they were together and because well, their games were so consistent. I disagree in the fact that I, I do, I stand by Doug could have been the star. Yeah, Doug he could have been. Everything to be, it, I don't think it really mattered who Doug was sitting next to in the end if he played or if he, if he sold himself right. Yeah. And, I mean, and he just didn't. I agree. I completely agree. And then, yeah, at the, on the on the point of like Doug was using resources that were built by Santi and Tim, that was still like it did all lead back to Doug. Like that's that was yeah. the, he made himself the pinnacle. He created, yes. he made the game into a pyramid scheme where he was the point. Like yeah. that's what Doug did. That's, that's the great. game. He, he still dies out. out. He but, still dies out if he doesn't have those people. If he doesn't have I, the resources, he doesn't but I have. Know what he did. But he did. You can't like, discount a part of somebody's game yeah. and say if they didn't have this, then they wouldn't yeah. be here. Like, but I will say, Doug, Doug did not play a good game from Final 8 to Final Tribal. I think that the only possible point you can really point to, like, Doug really made the best move is maybe Final 5, but even then it's like, not re- like, he made the decision, sure, but I don't even know if getting rid of Dane is the best choice. Like, Final 8, he refused to take part in the Sadie vote. So, even if that's helpful, he cannot claim at all any credit. Final seven, he has a relationship with Abby and Delarom, and he betrays that. Final six is absolutely not the uh, not a good moment for Doug in any capacity. Final mm-hmm. five, I mean, I think final one. four is Doug's best move. It just wasn't a move he didn't want to claim. He wanted to take like, credit for it. Surviving when you shouldn't survive there is very impressive. He didn't want to claim it, and that's what like is such a detriment to his game. 
if he would have just claimed it, then like he is that guy. Like he Yeah, but he didn't claim it because he doesn't want to be that guy, which yeah. like I completely understand. And I, like, yeah, I and on that token, that. like sure, maybe that's like if that's what got him the loss of like still wanting to present himself as a good person, then that then like I'm fine with that. Yeah. Well, like, it, I'm not <laughs> personally, I think he should have um, claimed it, but I get where you're coming from. I get like, pizza, like if he doesn't want to be that bad guy, he doesn't have to be that bad but guy. The thing is, the thing oh. is, it's like you did it. You already did it. You, yeah. you yeah, are that, that guy. You already yeah. did this, girl. He did. And I agree. And but like he, four years later, he's watching it and he's not proud of it still. You know, exactly. like he's still not proud. Exactly. Like he still doesn't feel like he. But I think that what you need to do then is say, I did this. I am not proud of this. Mm -hmm. But if you're, if you're in that act of like claiming it, of like, I did this, like, no, I'm not proud, but here's what I did, then you are claiming that as something you did intentionally, that you did in a calculated way, which I don't think he did. And that's why he wasn't claiming it, even in that way of saying, like, I'm not proud I of it. But I just, I think that it was calculated. I don't, I don't buy that it wasn't. And I think that I, I get like the backtracking on it and not wanting it to have been calculated because. You know, it is that, I mean. Josh, we get it. You uh, will do this and take credit for it. And you'll say, I, you know, I hated to do it, but I did it. Um, <laughs> that's just not Doug. Yeah, and I mean, yeah, and, that, and that's fair. You know, he, he is his own, he's his own villain. He's his own form of it. So, you know, can't. But we embrace all of them. <laughs> <laughs> We're not we anti-Doug because he's a villain. I mean, this is an interesting case study of like, I, I saw a lot of people talking about like women get penalized for being emotional, which I think is definitely true. But Doug did get penalized for being emotional too. So at least we had to go the other way as well. Now, did, was he against a woman? So emotional to see. That's a different really? question. But uh, at least we see that there's a, some, that's, that's, that is something that is applied a little bit more broader. Yeah, you know, everyone was worried. Like everyone always thinks that, oh man, a final three guys, like it's gonna be a bro down, whatever. So much crying in this episode. Oh my god. Way more than, way more than last season where it was final four women. So much crying this episode. It was literally like <laughs> it's I actually was saying that it was really emotional and sad earlier. I still stand by that, but that scene of like Santi being like, You hurt my feelings. Like this this hurts my feelings. It's so like not what people would have expected in this final three. Not what I expected, especially with the final three that we did have. It's, it's just like so different. I was, yeah, I was, <laughs> I was not anticipating this, but like I, so I started watching the finale, like I was half an hour behind, but Naz texted me like while I was behind and she was like, these Doug tears. And I was like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Don't Literally. say that. Spoiler. Yeah. There's a lot of crying. Like, yes. I get this it. A, I will say that the way this is also an interesting thing. Santi handles uh, a lot of these situations very well. Like when mm -hmm. he's talking to Doug, he expresses like a little bit of annoyance, but it's like the way that he handles Doug crying and like being beside himself is very, it's very good. It's just like he is completely validating Doug's feelings and just like trying to also get just answers from him without like condemning it or judging him or any of it but then again i think austin you said like it's they shouldn't be allowing doug to just dictate the terms of friendship and of uh of what is game and what is not yeah it's hard because that is santi and like he is genuinely one of the like nicest you meet him and you just feel the warmth and like he just he just it's, it's his charisma and he in like in like a very nice and reassuring way but we we did go back and Santi in his pregame interview said that he would choose like a good friend over the win. Like he said that in his interview. And you you're always going to cast someone like Santi in a season because he's 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 just a great like person and character to begin with, but he certainly set that up and I think like that that Look, you sit that across from Santi and you go, "I'm casting you. I don't care what you say." Oh, um, you said I wasn't allowed to thirst over Santi and you get to it, thirst over it's Santi. A joke. It's not fair. I said not. You thirst over like a dry desert. Like it there's no stopping <laughs> any level of thirst. Woo! Not with my own players. Calm down. Um, That's how I feel. Mike wasn't even in the final three. Uh but yeah it's what a what a what a trio. What a what a great trio. 
it's interesting because I don't think Doug would do the same. I think Doug would have cut uh, Tim or Santi. percent But he didn't have any agency here. No. Oh, he didn't I, have lost his I, agency rounds ago. He we didn't want to because we didn't. Uh, so earlier in the summer, we had a Generations at Core game. It was a big game with like the three generations of Survivor Maryland and a bunch of our players. And it was, I think, Final Seven. There was one room that was uh, Steve Sleesman, Katie Ahn, uh, Chris Thomas and Santi and I went a room of all winners baby but season 7 hadn't come out and now I'm just so happy to talk about that because the fact that four winners the four winners of the game made it or yeah four winners of the game made it that far it was like incredible I'm glad you brought that up because everybody remembered that moment I remember it <laughs> he's a king all right I'm beyond happy that Santi got to come back and show he's a good player so people can't invalidate it I would yeah, never. Well, I would some never. People say, some people seem to need validation for their wins in their original Survivor Maryland season. I hear that's going around these days. <laughs> Who, Whoever could say that. Um, I don't know if we want to talk about the, the teaser for season eight. I don't know if you guys know enough about uh, the previous seasons to talk about it. But yes, Queen mm -hmm. Katie, we'll see you next season. Sounds good. Like Mike is playing um, season, right? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Aaron, are you all right? Aaron, here's the real question: the final three. Who are you giving that rose to? Oh goodness! Oh, great question. I mean, you need a man that's gonna love you as much as Santi loves Doug. Uh, so Santi has to get the rose just because the love is so there, and you know those eyes. So Santi uh, gets the final rose. Yeah, there you go. Austin gets it. The Bolivian prince, as Josh put it. The what did Josh say? The Bolivian prince. Oh, yes. Wait, yes. Santi, I can hear him say that. Santi, will you accept this rose? Here we go. I might have taken a little while. Anders, you didn't ask me. Well, it's been a thing with Aaron, but sure. No, Brie, who, <laughs> Brie who, who would you give the rose to? Santi, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Call me. Uh, <laughs> Josh, what about you? Who would you give the rose to? They're all straight. I'm giving the rose to myself. Fair <laughs> enough. Uh, wow. You know, a rose can transcend it. It doesn't matter. It's not a real thing. Well, um, I was going to say that I, despite not being straight, was going to give mine to Angie, the savior of the season. <laughs> Great answer. You know what? I'm going to give mine to Delaram. That's who gets my rose. Like she, she's my queen here. Uh, mine has to go obviously to Dane Train, baby. Oh, no. I didn't want to say I because because Anders is never going to admit this. I want to say that Anders in the initial intro for the finale had called like Dane is the cockroach, whatever, and I was like Anders of all times. You got to have a Dane Train reference. Like, you, this is the time to get it in there. And to Anders' credit, he delivered by saying, Is this the final stop? So, great job, Anders. Um, also, Santi accepts the rose. Wow. Um, so, from both you and Bree. Um, so, we'll have to see who he gives the rose back to. A two on one? Oh my Santi. God. Two on one day. Oh my God. You know what? I'm glad we got to this. This cut into the middle of my Tasha time. So. We'll have, to, <laughs> have to catch up after, but um, well, I uh, final thoughts from everyone about this finale, about all of that, the journey that the season was, and truly, what was the major conflict of it all? Was it the majors? Was it the relationships? Was it Doug and Santi? What was it? You have to turn your SI by the end of the week about what you think major conflict right. represented in this season. I mean, literally when somebody was like, oh, yeah, humanity's won, I was like, oh, right, we did that. <laughs> that was the theme that we did. Yeah, I, for, like, I knew that they were, like, separated by majors, and I still didn't make the connection until, like, five or six episodes in that major conflict was, like, <laughs> the majors. I was like, oh, there's going to be a lot of conflict, right? <laughs> that was what I oh, just no. Like, it's like the same vibe. No, it took me forever. And then I was like, oh, it was intentional. Well, it's funny because the next season is called Winner Take All. And they're like, well, Katie Ann is a winner. So she wins. It's like, we named the season before it started. What What do you mean? <laughs> it's just a, like it's a coincidence. It. Um, but, I mean, okay. Um, 
<laughs> oh, oh, by the way, Bree, Alicia is in uh, in the comments giving some information out. Um, ah! <laughs> she got doxxed. She got doxxed. Um, I am smart. Uh, despite the, made, I, shouldn't have said the, I shouldn't have said the major conflict thing. That's so stupid. It's so embarrassing. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, let's let's get final thoughts. So you don't say anything more embarrassing. Uh, Bree, what are your final thoughts on the season? Um, I love Santi. I think Doug should have won. Personally. <laughs> Man, you're really selling it well with Santi here. <laughs> well, so call me. <laughs> Josh, what are your what are your final thoughts on the season? You know, I think that this was an incredibly compelling season narratively. I think that we saw really strong players. I think that the major conflict of the season really was the hero villain arc of Santi and Doug together. I think that it was a very epic end to the season. Granted, the final tribal council, due to some of the extraneous circumstances, I think fell a little flat uh, because of the texting, because of the inability for these three gentlemen to properly communicate their games. Uh, however, I think overall, you can consider this a great season of Survivor Maryland. Uh, Austin, what are your final thoughts on the season? You know, they say that you can't judge a season till the finale. And I think that that's totally accurate here. Like, I think it was worth going through the slog of some of those episodes to get to these questions that I think are unique and unprecedented and really speak to the heart of what we're all, what we all enjoy here. Um, and, you know, props to you for putting this all together, for editing the season, for getting through it. I know how long it takes and how grueling it is. And you did an awesome job with the edit. Um, but I had a great job going through it, and I am certainly freaking stoked for season eight and the returns of my queens, Katie and Sherry. And uh, yeah, it's going to be so fun. And uh, the literally, I, I don't think people know this yet, but like the winner take all thing is a direct response to we were frustrated by season seven too and wanted to cast the most competitive people possible so that everyone knows we playing. And this cast is freaking loaded. Like they are. Oh my God. Yeah. We, we said, what, how can we make a season more competitive? Oh, we make it insane. All right, let's do it. Uh, how many returners? Just eight, just eight. Uh, yeah, and the returnees are very fun, but like when the newbie cast showed up that first day, Oh my God, they, they were electric. Like I had never seen anything like that in any of the seasons. So incredible. Such a great season. Uh, if anyone asks me how long it's going to take, it adds an extra month. Um, Aaron, <laughs> you've been here the whole time. Tell me, what are your final thoughts? You've watched it all. You've lived it all. You've been a part of it. Yeah, I mean, wow, it's fantastic. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> amazing. Go to Aaron dirty like this. Thanks, Anders. No, it's to be expected. Um, no, I mean, it's been super fun. I have, I honestly, I loved the season. I thought that it was great. I don't think that it was like soured at all. I know people were like, oh, it's boring. I so disagree. Um, I think that there was a lot of um, dynamic things happening throughout the season. I think it tells a very interesting story that you don't see in a lot of Survivor seasons. And I think that the ending was such pure, raw college Survivor. And that's something that you, you know, you can't get anywhere else. And I thought that it was so great, so perfect. Um, I do, you know, love Santi, glad that he won, but I do think it should have been Doug. Um, I think that, you know, this season we're really was- We're selling ourselves well here, Aaron. <laughs> what? I said we're really selling ourselves here, Aaron. Yeah. I wanna make it a competitive two on one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I think, I, I think that this season was like gameplay wise was, was great like super intense um and i think we really saw some great characters shine very excited for season eight i think all of the returnees look fantastic and excited about austin's pitch uh, about the newbies so yeah uh if you also want another pitch santi who is on crew says it is insane um and don't worry santi isn't there so doug doesn't have his help um <laughs> but yeah finally you get to watch doug without a bunch of friends there to help him um, and he I goes can't wait to Mike. I've watched Mike twice now. I'm sure he's going to do generally the same. <laughs> so you get to see Mike again. If you don't know what that's like, just watch this season and you get a feel. Um, all right. Well, 
I want to say thank you everyone who's been watching. I can't believe we were almost recorded an identically long finale live show. So if you really were like, damn, I wish I had more Survivor Maryland content, congrats. There's now a total of five and a half hours that we've put out this week. We um, need more tears, though. <laughs> but if you want more, you know, we'll put out more. Uh, but thank you, everyone, who's been watching and following and commenting and liking and all of that. Um, I can't wait to do season eight. It will be a while, I will tell you that. But it's been such a pleasure. Uh, it's been great having all of you join me on the live show. And uh, we'll see you next season for Survivor Maryland Winner Take All, which is one of my favorite seasons in general overall. Um, and I think if you were ever worried, oh, man, I really want a really competitive season with insane characters and moves and whatnot, it's coming, baby. Oh, it's coming. Um, and don't worry. It's no, it's not going to be in uh, what an edge of extinction where the four attorneys really dominate the time. I don't know how I'm going to edit with all with these players because there's truly no one no dud they're all incredible and full, full i dream for season eight it's worth it it's freaking awesome um you have another from eric yang uh winner take all is good because mike is there i mean i could have said better myself uh anyways have a wonderful night everyone and we'll see you next season whenever that is <laughs> bye, bye.